Good day. So I've seen this question pop up on music theory and saxophone forums, so I figured I'd give an explanation on why transposing instruments are a thing. It seems to be very confusing, and I'll admit that it is, but I'm going to explain um, a very simplified version of it, and then I'm going to go into detail on why we have them. I will tell you, if you just want to know what it is and what you need to do, um, I'm going to do that one first. If you want to know why, keep watching. Okay, so what is transposition? Transposition first, you need to know your intervals. I made a movie about that. Um, you can go watch it on my YouTube channel um, about the distance and the, the intervals and how we describe the distance between two notes. All right. Transposition is very helpful in the composition world because I um, like to write in the key of C because it's just easier for me just to think in one key instead of all of them. Um, but to fit an instrument or a voice or an ensemble, you might ch you will change the key. Uh, for instance, um, voices seem to like the key of D flat or D. All right, because that's where the the human voice usually lies. So let's make it easier for them to sing. Um, for your instruments, for wind instruments, tend to like flat keys. String instruments tend to like sharp keys. The reason is what happens when you put your finger down. Okay, on a wind instrument, you put your finger down, the instrument gets lower. If you put your finger down on a string, the instrument gets higher. Okay, there's more to it than that, but that's the basic fundamental. And you'll also see this if you play in multiple ensembles. Um, orchestra, like the orchestral version of Stars and Stripes Forever, is in the key of D, not in the original key of E flat that it is in for um, band, okay? D is a much nicer, happier orchestra key, all right? It's also a very um, useful skill as an instrument. Say you're missing a part um, and your part needs to be covered and it's not in your key. Um, I have played alto sax over horn parts, so you have to go up a step. Or sometimes um, uh, you might be asked to play the piece in a different key to fix the vocalist or something like that. There's a long story behind that one. Doesn't happen very often. But basically, you see a part, I need this trumpet part covered, but I don't have a trumpet. I need to transpose, okay, if I'm not a B-flat trumpet. All right, so we need to have what's called concert pitch. And concert pitches are com common language. So if you hear your director say um, A concert, D concert, E flat concert, okay? What he's speaking to is what the piano note is, okay? And when we say concert pitch, we also mean C instruments. So instruments that use the key the that are in C, that means they play, if they play a C, it's going to sound the same as a C on the piano. All right. The piano can play the same part as the flute. The flute can play the same part as the piano, and they will sound the same. Not a problem. So your common instruments are flutes, piccolos, oboes, C trumpet. Um, all your strings and um, your bass clef instruments. All right. So for simple transposition, it's a thing you just do it. So when a B-flat instrument plays a whole step above, means that when they play a written C on their part, it sounds concert B flat. That means if the flute is playing B flat and I'm playing a tenor saxophone or a soprano saxophone or a clarinet or a trumpet, I need to play a written C. If I am an F instrument, like a, a horn or um, English horn, Okay, they are a fifth above. So when they say uh, C a C, it sounds an F below. So when the director says play concert F, they play a written C. They're looking at a C, it's going to sound an F. So that means this flute is playing an F for 
me to match that pitch, I need to play a C. Okay, E flat instruments, major sixth above. All right. So if my flute is playing E flat and I want to match their pitch, I need to play a C. Okay. So you simply remember uh, B flat is up one, F is up five, E flat is up six. Okay. These are the common pulse transpositions you will find in most band music. Are there other ones? Yes, but we're not going there today. All right. So to illustrate this, here you go. Here is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So look at the flute part. Do, 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 do. In order for the alto sax to play the same pitch, it has to play six notes above. So you look at the C in the flute and you see an A in the alto sax, you got to go up six notes. C, D, E, F, G, A. So that is a sixth above. If you look at the tenor sax, okay, it is a whole step above. So C to D is a whole step. So for them to play the same note, they have to play one note up. The horn plays a perfect fifth above. So they have to play C, D, E, F, G, five notes above um, the flute. And trombone um, is a bass clef instrument. So trombone, tuba, bassoon, euphonium, baritone, things like that. They're all C instruments. They all read bass clef, so they're already automatically C instruments. So if this is going to be played in octaves, okay, this is the way it needs to be for them to all sound the same notes. All right. Now I'm going to go into the woods. So if you can just accept transposition as a thing, and that's just something that we do, you just need to know uh, B flat is up one, F is up five, E flat is up six. Specifically, major second, perfect fifth, major sixth. Okay, I'm going to go into the woods now, and this is going to explain why we do this. Okay, I'm giving you a chance to get out. Five, four, three, two, here you go. All right, so we want to write music, okay? When I want to write music, I'm trying to communicate pitch. How high, how low, okay? So here is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and I can do it in treble clef. I just did it three ways, okay? So I can do C, C, D, G, A, A, G, F, F, E, E, D, D, C. I can do it up an octave. I can do it up two octaves, all right? The way we extend the clef is through ledger lines, okay? And the reason we have ledger lines is so that we don't need to keep going adding, 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 adding stabs, okay? So it's just the way it is. We want to show how high or how low. We want to show, uh, we use ledger lines and um, to show that. Okay, but... What if I have a low instrument? Okay. Well, if I want to do, do that for something low, like a cello or a bassoon or a euphonium or tuba, technically they could read treble clef, but do you want to read the top one or the bottom one? All right. Another consideration that you also have is um, historically music was written by hand and um, paper is expensive and you don't want to you want to get as much out of your paper as possible, which is why when you look at actual manuscripts, you know, the handwriting is, is terrible and sometimes they scrunch measures and stuff like that because the physical thing you need to write it on is a commodity that we don't want to waste. So you could have the discussion on whether it was ledger lines, whether it was probably a combination of avoiding ledger lines and 
um, space saving. All right. If you know strings, why do we have an alto clef? So on the top here, I have the um, concert pitches, and on the bottom, I have what they actually read. So if you look at the uh, violin, okay, I have to extend with ledger lines so they're lowest string, and that's not too bad to read. And also, why would you want to change clefs for two or three notes? That's just kind of dumb. Cello fits nicely with its open strings on the bass clef, okay? And, but viola has a C and a G string on the bass clef and a D and an A string sounding in the treble clef. So we have an alto clef to bridge the gap where the line is in the middle on the alto clef is your middle C on your piano. All right, now, yes, these instruments, more advanced playing, they do change clefs frequently, but we're not going there today. And what about the bass? Okay, so on the left is the concert pitch of the bass, where it's written down below the bass clef, and then there's the written part um, on the right. So again, it saves from having to write um, ledger lines and also saves paper. Another way to save paper and ledger lines is to use different clefs for your vocal music. All right. So this top one on the left is a Bach chorale. Okay. And um, he did not write them this way. Okay. This is a modern interpretation of uh, his voice leading. On the bottom here, you can see he writes four different parts. Okay. And if you look carefully, you see there's a clef at the beginning of the top three, and it kind of looks like a C. So it is a C clef. So you have a soprano clef, an alto clef, a tenor clef, and a bass clef. It keeps you from having to write ledger lines. It also keeps you from having to waste paper. Okay. Now, the way um, Bach would, the, the some of the places were published where you'd have the soprano, alto, tenor, uh, bass written on one page and the sopranos on the upper left, altos on the lower left, tenors on the upper right, basses on the lower right. So I just transcribed this for you using clefs um, as four different parts just so you could see how it would look in um, modern notation if we were using this system. And again, you see that um, it largely avoids ledger lines for both parts. Because the alto goes below and the tenor goes above. And if you notice, when I use a clef, uh, change the clefs, I don't have to use ledger lines. And I'm saving paper. All right. So now we're going to go to the recorder. And the recorder you might have played one in elementary school, um, is a Renaissance instrument. And on the top here, I have a, um, the soprano is C, just basic ranges, is C to A, F to D, C to A, F to D. Those are your basic pitches on recorder, okay? But if you look at the bottom, the soprano recorder plays C to A, like the first one in the in the sounding, but the alto, hmm, it transposes down an octave, but it's but it's not showing, and that's going to create a problem now, isn't it? Tenor is a simple octave transposition, but the bass. Oh my, that's in F to D, and I got a, it's in bass clef too. Now, bass, bass recorders, um, modern notation tends to put them in treble clef, so it's easier, it reads the same as alto, but for the purposes, we're gonna keep, stick with the old, old system. Okay, so here is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star for four recorders playing in two octaves. The soprano and the alto are playing the exact same notes. 
the tenor and the bass are playing the exact same notes. So you notice for the alto to play the soprano's low C, it needs to play a C in the staff. It's an as to play written an octave above. If I'm looking at the tenor and the bass, same thing. I have the tenor, the bass is playing a C. For the tenor to match that C, it has to play a low C. So you can see where this is going to be a problem. It could be a transposing instrument, but they're not. So if I put all my fingers down on a soprano or a tenor, it plays a C. If I put all my fingers down on a uh, alto or bass or sopranino, it plays an F. Okay, so your recorders could be a transposing instrument, but they're not. So to fix the problem of this, I need to have different fingerings. Okay, now fortunately there's a C fingering and an F recording fingering, and when you play recorder, you just figure it out, but that's kind of a pain. Another thing, way to change the pitch is with a crook, all right? So if you go back to Mozart, Haydn, um, some uh, 18th century and um, early 19th century um, orchestra works, they hadn't invented valves yet. So the instruments could only produce the overtone series. And so what you're looking at here is an overtone series for a trumpet or a horn, and that's what they could play. Now, they could the horns could alter their pitches with their hands and whatnot, but for purposes of our discussion, those are the notes they can play. They can't do much. They don't get a lot of melodic playing because when you can only play four or five notes, there's really not a lot, and they're not together, there's really not a lot you can do with them. Okay. So how do they change the keys? You have to physically change the instrument. So on the top right here is a trumpet with the crooks. So if I want to change the keys, I got to put take the one off and put the other ones on. All right. So in a lot of your um, 18th century, 19th century plays, you have a 1-5-1. One, one. The timpani plays the root and your brasses play the roots and the fifths. Same with the horn, play the roots and the fifths. That's what they're good for, and that's what they can do, which is why when you see their music, you don't see completed chords until composers started using valved instruments in the brass section. If you wanted that major or minor third or whatever it was, it had to come from somewhere else. And the reason I included the timpani is I had a good discussion with somebody and he said think of the timpani as your third trumpet part because again this is before the tuba um, was invented and um, think of them the the timpani and the, the, the timpani horns and trumpets as a set of instruments to themselves to be able to play okay so for these guys to change pitch they have to physically change their instrument all right, so we're getting up to the saxophone now. Okay, so Adolf Sax was an inventor, and he had an idea. He wanted an instrument that had the power of a brass instrument and the agility of the wood in woodwind instruments. Okay, um, there was this thing called an Ophiclide. Most of them are museum pieces now, um, and it just wasn't cutting it. Intonation issues manufacturing it just it didn't quite do what you know it was supposed to do it was like uh, you you blew into it like a uh, a brass instrument and, and then you added keys to change the sound and it just you know there were other advancements and this, this thing was just sort of like a franken instrument that they were using um in the early 19th century all right so your original um saxophones were a um, pitched in C and F, but today we have B flat and E flat, and mostly that was to fix the timbre and intonation issues. Moving on. All right, 
So the sounding pitches for each saxophone. So a soprano um, has would be in the lowest note is an A flat on the top line in bass clef, all the way to E flat. Alto, D flat to A flat, tenor, A flat to E flat, and then uh, baritone, D flat to A flat. All right. Those are the written, I'm sorry, the sounding pitches of the saxophone family. All right, so transposition of voids, clefts, and ledger lines. So if we didn't have transposition, you could end up with some kind of monstrosity like this, where each one's reading a different clef. So you're going to have lots of notes above the staff. So you got ends up with ledger lines, and then who knows about the fingerings? It's just, bleh. I, I, I just no, nobody wants to do that. So you could use clefts, but then what about fingerings? And it's just, ugh, gross. Okay, transfer voids also avoids the problem of clefts and fingering problems again. So here is twinkle twinkle little star in the key of B flat. And so soprano would have a look at that. The altos and the alto, ugh. It's just, ugh. no. Who wants to read that? So if you're playing saxophone and you're using the concert pitch, you would need to use, learn four clefs if you're going to play SATB. Nobody wants to do that. Okay. It also avoids the recorder fingering problem. So I wrote out the same thing on where the uh, instruments sound. Okay, twinkle, twinkle, little star. This, by the way, is the same as this. Okay, so it avoids. So I said, well, what if we just said we're just going to write it in clefs and octaves? Well, then I still have a fingering problem where the soprano and tenor would have the same fingerings and the alto and the baritone would have the same fingerings, but I would have to learn different fingerings for each one in order to play together. Okay. Um, you could put use a crook, I have no idea, that's why I put a question mark there, to physically change the keys of the instruments. So then you could all play the same. And I don't know, the bell would come off or the neck would do something weird. Um, who knows what that would look like. So we don't have to deal with the crook problem. So transposition solves the problem. So there's your written pitches on the top. I'm sorry, your sounding pitches, excuse me. Your sounding concert pitches on the top versus your written pitches all on the bottom. So we can all play the same written music with the same fingerings and not have to deal with crazy clefts. Well, let's be exact, and this is the last slide. Concert pitch to your written interval. Soprano is a major second above, okay? So if you notice the top notes on all of these are all C. Okay. Soprano is a major second above um, concert pitch. An alto is a major sixth above concert pitch. A tenor is a major ninth, or you can think of it as a major second and then add an octave above the written pitch. And a baritone is a major thirteenth or a major six and an octave above the written pitch. All right, that's just to be super accurate. But so the top line is what we would all play and the bottom line is what they would sound like. All right, if you found that uh, useful or interesting, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Also, the studio is open. Uh, link 
is in the description if you want to contact me. I hope this answers your questions on why we have transposing instruments. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a nice day.